All right, we're going to get into a fun one today. <laughs> this, I think, is Bible passage is probably one of the most, if not the most, confusing and misquoted probably in all the Bible. So, get ready for it, all right? This is Genesis 6, verse 4, the Nephilim. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God went to the daughters of men and had children by them. They were heroes of old, men of renown. Please, if you like another Bible translation, look it up and uh, see what it says in your translation. Uh, King James, NSAB, whatever, look it up. But let's focus on the actual punctuation, if you will. <laughs> it says, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterwards. So in this, it says the Nephilim were already there. The Nephilim were there, and they were there after this stuff happens. So what happens after? When, I don't want to say after, but what happens between? When the sons of God went to the daughters of men and had children by them. So the Nephilim were already there, and the Nephilim were there after this event, and then... In between, when the sons of God went to the daughters of men and had children by them. A lot of people read this and they think that the children that were created because of this relationship between the sons of God and the daughters of man were the Nephilim. No, <laughs> no, they're not. This is what it says they were. It says, when the sons of God went to the daughters of men and the children and had children by them, here's where it says what they were. They were heroes of old, men of renown. They were monsters, giants, and, and they were horrible. Oh. No, it doesn't say that. It says they were heroes, heroes of old, men of renown. Renown is not a bad thing. Heroes, not a bad thing. So when you're reading this and you hear people talk about the Nephilim, and I'm not going to give you a I don't know. I'm going to tell you I don't know who the Nephilim were. Um, most likely um, they could have been giants. But that's not what this passage is talking about. This passage is, is saying that the Nephilim were there. This event happens where the sons of God and the, and the daughters of man have children. And those children become heroes of old, men of renown, and then the Nephilim were still there. That's, that's what it's saying. Please go out and look up the passage yourself. Read read the context, read the the um the way it's wrote, and and and, and you probably once you read it for yourselves and you read the context, you read the um the gr grammatical style that's written in, you'll understand that. The Nephilim are not this creation between the sons of God and the daughters of men. Okay, that's part one. Part two, which is trickier. It says, when the sons of God went to the daughters of men and had children by them. <laughs> Some people say that the sons of God were angels. I think... If I remember right, there's one other time where angels are referred to maybe as the sons of God. I think it's in Job. I'd have to look that part up. 
But in most cases, the sons of God, it doesn't have anything to do with angels. The angels are, they're, you know, they're named angels, seraphim, cherubim, you know, they're named. Um, I am not going to say that this is not about angels having relationships with humans. But I do want to point out that most people believe that angels are non-sexual beings. Uh, and it's said that, you know, uh, I know I've read and, and have heard that um, when we get to heaven, that uh, there is no taking or giving in marriage. And in God's eyes, if we're not married, having sex outside of marriage is a sin. So there would be no sex outside of marriage. So if there is no giver taken in marriage, then there would be no sex in heaven. Um, sorry to disappoint you, <laughs> but that that's the way I understand it. Um, the, the other aspect of this is, is people think that um, we will be like angels when we have our perfected body when we get to heaven and go to the new earth. Uh, and they will say that we will have a perfected body and we'll be like angels, and angels are non-sexual, um, so that we would be non-sexual as well. So I'm just suggesting, because I can't, uh, there is no way to like 100% verify it, because it doesn't say it in the Bible. But if angels are non-sexual, and we will have bodies like angels or bodies, glorified bodies like Christ, uh, then we are asexual, uh, non-sexual, then how could the uh, sons of God, if this is really claiming to be about angels, um, have sex with the daughters of man and have children? Um, just something to think about there. Um, a lot of times, if, if, if you can't find it in Scripture... And it doesn't say it verbatim. Uh, you might be able to find some passages that relate to the subject that might give you a clue. But I would definitely um, stray away from coming to a conclusion. This is fact. Because we don't know. Um, but if angels are asexual, I mean non-sexual, then they couldn't come to the daughters of man and, and have sex and have babies and make the Nephilim. <laughs> For one, the Nephilim were already there, and then the Nephilim were there later. Um, I would assume, just an assumption, it's not a fact, this is an assumption, I would assume that the Nephilim are um, probably more of a spiritual type being um, than a... Uh, you know, um, a, an in, a, a cross between human and angel. Um, but anyway, all right, well, take care, God bless, and uh, read your Bible. It'll keep you from um, believing in um, things that aren't right. All right, take care, God bless, bye!